somewhere down there are some caves called Wolf's Caves um, but they're no longer accessible, too dangerous in uh, the National Trust's Le Don Charles Le Kenny okay how's about this for a view down on Bonnui Bay good night bay eh fantastic views and this is where I plan having my lunch it's 20 to 2 more communication towers over there or masts onward journey is clear footpath is uh, chiselled into the woodland and bracken pretty clearly and this vacant seat with that uh, lovely view no dedication on it today though is going to be my lunchtime stop okay, 5 past 2 lunch has been had and we can now clearly see in the distance there the Normandy coastline the beaches of Normandy that'll be on the uh, breast side I think also lots of little um, bits of rock sticking out of the sea as well quite a hazardous seafaring area this obviously Sark still clearly visible One thing I have noticed about Jersey, there's not much use of solar panels, which is uh, not too good, seeing as the sun certainly seems to shine a lot down here. On the rocks over there, you can clearly see where the tide's gone out, leaving uh, what's commonly known as a tide mark, hence the expression in the bath. In this windy staircase into Bonnui Bay. Self-explanatory. So at a road junction here you've got an option. You can either go into Bonnui Bay for coffee or continue as I'm going to do, left. That's most of the post boxes are still GR. It's amazing that the Germans didn't rip all those out when they were here. Paddy Dillon refers to this short alternative just over the road from where I am at the moment La Valette walk but obviously uh, time's against me today on the other side by the bus stop you get this view of the uh, small jetty at Bonnui Bay and that rather pleasant uh, backdrop that I've just come down from More information about the National Trust for Jersey. So here we are, Old Fort Road, Cliff Path. Can't see the sign that Paddy Dillon's referring to. Maybe it used to be on that uh, marker there. Not anymore though. My goodness, not something you'd expect to see on Jersey, is it? December 2012, Hostel for the Homeless. I'm not going to say any more about that, but uh, I'm sure Tony Blair's got a lot of explaining to do. Even though he's got nothing to do with Jersey, still blame him. And it's on the uh, Le Don Best estate. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? Okay, just as the text describes, have a choice of paths here. Either leads to the same place, apparently. I'm inclined to take the lower one today simply because the views are possibly uh, a little bit nicer, closer to hand. And from said point, looking back at Bonnui Bay, with the uh, radio mast in the background, the 
very Mediterranean-esque. Dun guard house at Le Crete over there, dates back to 1830, but is now let out as holiday accommodation by Jersey Heritage. Doesn't seem to have been uh, modified by the Germans. What a very pleasant afternoon we're now having. One final view of uh, Bonnoui Bay before I turn the headland. This is from the holiday accommodation, the old fort at La Crete. Information board here about the fort in 1813 during the Napoleonic War. A small battery of two 18 pound cannon, powder magazine, and a store was built. Jersey militia manned it. As you can see by the motorhome, looks like somebody's in residence at the moment. Towards Bell Hogue Point and the path is clearly visible there. I'm still on the lower path. Despite uh, Paddy's advice to go up to the Platon, which is up there somewhere. Can't believe how delightfully pleasant it is here. Fantastic, this particular part of the coast path anyway. These are actually across Giffard's Bay. One thing that's a common sort of feature pretty much for the whole of the walk, uh, well for a lot of it, let's not say uh, all of it, there's always a hedge on the seaward side, which is great protection on a day like today with a northeasterly, which is partly why I didn't go up on the higher path. Well, here I am at Bell Hogue Point, stood next to this chair, which has only very recently been put in. And that sounds like a Japanese name. Might be wrong, Yoka. But anyway, must have helicoptered that in here. There's one final view back to Bonnui Bay and in the foreground there at La Crete, the fort. Up on my left, Le Platon with its telecommunication towers. Let's rejoin. A 360, well 180 actually, from uh, Bell Hogue Point with um, France, Normandy on my right again. journey down there towards Bouley Bay. Oh, those butterflies again re-energising in the sun. Bit of grassy path here. What a fantastic bit of uh, geography there. Look at that fissure in that rock. Seas just carved that open. Amazing. Master craftsman at work there. Peregrine, I think. Look at that. Ah, oh, magnificent. Where's he gone? Lost him. The way you can catch the wind and just stand still. 
incredible. Look at that balance. Fantastic. Sun's against me here, so I don't know if you can see him clearly. But that is a brilliant bit of uh, acrobatics. The ultimate hermit's retreat here. First this morning we had wolf's caves. Now we've got wolf's lair. Some character this wolf guy. Spookily in the shadows. Amazing little place. Memorial here to um, British and French commandos. Took part in a raid in 43. And the commanding officer, Hyton, was fatally wounded. Then immediately opposite, you've got obviously a, a quite new bench in appreciation of members past and present, the SBS. By strength and guile. God rest your souls and thank you for everything you do for us. Up the wooded valley, makes a bit of a change of scenery, complete with babbling brook. From whence I've just come, marked up in 1982, and that's where I'm headed. I wonder if the blue strips of paint, daubs of paint, have got anything to do with that uh, road run. Might make sense. Road run, I mean round island run. Here for example. Wolf's lair from another angle. Clearly showing that uh, it's got smuggling possibilities. Hence the name lair. Look at that, it's really close to the cliff edge. Interesting to know why they've uh, put those memorials to the SBS and Navy down there though. Must be something in that. This was lavender for a second, but it hasn't got any smell. Unless it's uh, some kind of sea lavender that's been blown up here. Same way that uh, there's oaks. God knows what else uh, varieties of trees. Probably getting blown over from the UK or France. Here's a sweet chestnut, for example. How'd that get here? Brief snippet down there of what I believe to be Bewley Bay, which means my day's walking's nearly done, unfortunately. Really enjoying it today. Yeah, as Paddy says in the text, if you don't get a quick glimpse, as I did a second ago, you miss it. Not sure which bay that is though, beyond this little headland. That could be uh, Bewley Bay beyond it, not sure. Soon find out. Clearly that little bay behind me wasn't Bewley Bay, as I now enter Don Anderton. Here we have Booley Bay. That is the power of the wind that even that mighty oak's been tamed. Not one of the largest oaks, but nonetheless, it's a strong old tree. More walking through a uh, high gorse bush. It's about seven foot, eight foot high here. 
scenery changes again now as we approach the edge of Booley Bay. Lovely. The small settlement of Booley Bay. Okay, so four miles completed to Bonnui, but uh, around 12 in total today, so I believe. Check the old pedometer in a minute. Check the spelling. Information board here about the myths and history of Booley Bay, including the uh, Black Dog Mystery, the Chien de Bully. Sorry, I'm looking at the French version here, am I? No. Further information about Bully Bay and its deep water harbour. Okay, this is the beach. I'll be back here again tomorrow, hopefully enjoying similar weather. Let's go and get a cup of char over at Mad Mary's over there. It's 4.15, so um, I left about 10.30, I think, didn't I? So just under six hours, and I've done 10 and a half miles, according to my pedometer. So not the quickest pace, but uh, it's pretty up and down, as coastal walks tend to be. I've done a coastal walk, um, thinking about it, for a long time. Anyway. Day three completed. Very nice as well it was. Thanks mainly to this glorious weather. Long may it rain. Not literally, but uh, the weather that is. Okay, just as a, a footnote actually, I'm down here at Mad Mary's. Who you can hear in the background there. Ma mad woman from Tipperary here, originally. Connemara, sorry, not Tipperary, got that wrong. But anyway, uh, I've just had a nice uh, bit of hospitality here to finish the day off. So that's Mad Mary's down in Bully Mad Bay. <laughs> it's a good end to your walk. Okay, Thursday the 6th of September, back in Bully Bay, ready for the uh, final section. It's around 14 miles today, and uh, as a quirk of fate, the bus left St Helia early, leaves at 9, the next one isn't till 11. So that probably suits, seeing as we're doing a longer walk today. So uh, here I am back in Bouley at 10am. And a cracking day it is. Unusually, uh, compared to the last few days, the sun is out early on. But there's still a bit of a breeze, another northerly wind. No problem though, keep the temperature just right. So let's get cracking. Bully Bay to St Helia, section 4. The way is clearly marked. Some delightful early morning woodland walking out of Bully. Delightful. Tamed oak. Views back down on Bully Bay. Further views down on Bully Bay. Trying to get hold of, ahead of that party down there. Too much noise. Hence the uh, puffing. Putting a pace on at the moment. This is uh, from a promontory called Le Tacarel, again, we've had one of these uh, before, delightful views. So, just a half mile done so far.
easy walking on the granite clinker as we enter another woodland area and cross another babbling brook. Final views of Booley Bay and the surrounding heat headland. Takarela Fort, built in 1836. is rather pleasant walking fantastic weather pretty easy underfoot though not on the thighs it is fairly uh, up and down and zigzagging as you tend to get with coastal walking but the uh, compensation is beautiful scenery so well worth doing boardwalks on a rare boggy section as you can hear from the trickling water Right, so I guess that's Beau Valley on the map and this is uh, La Tacarelle. Look at that, delightful. Fortress here, next to the path, just the other side of Beau Valley. Not a lot inside. board about Le Tacachel Fort and the origin of the word Norse meaning a heap or stack of rock. Now entering La Torrel as you can see means a tower, a small tower. The remnants of the fort of La Tacarel or Le Tacaray and uh, the bay in the distance. What Paddy describes in the text as potato fields is now the increasingly abundant rape. Bad news for Jersey that seeing as it's known for its uh, potatoes. Interesting uh, escape route if needed. Now walking through a holly bush come black currant or blackberry uh, cover. The path just trod, hidden amongst the undergrowth there, you'd hardly know there's a path in there. Lovely. We have La Tour de Roselle, the white rock, which you can just see poking up the top there, a navigational aid. White rock from another angle, not quite an islet, but joined to the mainland by a thin strip of land, and hence that's why people are able to get over there and walk about, as you can see from the well-trodden paths. And a final view back towards Booley Bay. over there in the distance before we turn inland slightly to go down to Rosal. Station board here about Le Catel de Roselle, an Iron Age promontory fort defended on two sides by steep cliffs. More on Google if you want it. Looking down on Rosal, Roselle, this looks a bit of a battered old place actually. What's going on over there? Seen better times anyway. Mm -hmm. 
So here we are at Rosal. Not on the bus network, so a bit quieter than other places. Nice sandy beach. Interesting stone here, in front of this house. There's a rare Elizabeth post box there. Clearly a new one. I got that wrong, it's on Route 3. Views back over Roselle just prior to turning off the road to follow a footpath to Le Scre. This footpath could easily be missed because uh, it's on the side of the hedge away from the town or the village Roselle. So uh, basically, look out for this new building here. It's a bit of an eyesore and look for this tall hedge and uh, you'll find the path again I guess Paddy would have been helpful in putting Rue de Fontenelle in the text as well because that's where it is on the left in Rue de Fontenelle Aftela says is a very pleasant little wooded valley Still keeping the eyes peeled for the uh, green lizards. The Dolmen de Couperon. And just my luck, I happened to turn up with a school party. The old uh, Couperon guardhouse, dating back to 1689. But as you can see, modified a little bit. Views back to Roselle from the Dolmen de Couperon and the surrounding area. Isn't this delightful? As you can see the tides on its way out. Crystal coloured waters. Not really much between uh, Jersey, well on the other coast anyway, not really much between Jersey and Brazil, when you think about it. Views looking eastwards, with France now clearly visible in the distance there. Is the Brittany coast, I got that wrong yesterday, not the Normandy. Coastline which I've walked in the past as well. Information board here about Le Dolmen de Couperon, late Neolithic, being built around two, uh, 5,000 years ago. More on Google if you wish it. Interesting. Uh, feature on top of that hill over there. As we ascend along the roadway now, walking away from the coast, apparently this section of the coast path has quite a number of more inland journeys. Mentioned in the text, passing the Grand Cotil de la Côte Ballot. Jersey's version of dry stone wall in here, again. Might be an element of road walking today, but uh, nice and peaceful. Green lanes. Just in range, a swallow. Haven't seen many down here, but uh, 
I wonder if they're starting to get together for their journey back to Africa. It's about that time of year, isn't it? Not many barns down here, really. That's, I suppose, uh, the swallow's habitat isn't around. I don't think I've seen any house martins and certainly no swifts. So here we have uh, the former folly referred to in the text, restored to a residential building now. Good old solid place. Good job they've done there. And a bit of work going on on the one opposite as well. Flique Tower. Information board here about Flique Tower. One of three towers along with St Catherine's and Archirondel, built to guard the east coast, which is always considered susceptible to attack from France. Which, as you can see over there, is not very far away at all. In fact, I can even see a ship out at sea there. And I will get my geography right. It is Normandy, not Brittany. San Marlo is south. That's uh, Brittany. Cherbourg is to the east here. Eventually, anyway. usual the blue arrows tell us which way to go and I notice they always seem to be anti-clockwise whereas I'm doing the walk clockwise hmm looking back at Flique with its tower and folly Lovely day for sunbathing. Just about to hit St Catherine's breakwater. Apparently this breakwater, which is uh, about a mile long, was built in preparation for Jersey Navy but um, failed to materialise but during the occupation there were secret tunnels from it across the bay to the other headland apparently there are also uh, out at sea but I can't see at the minute some disputed islands called Les Echerous uh, disputed because of the fishing rights Apparently beneath these rocks at Verclu, or Verklut, uh, the Germans built a load of tunnels during the occupation and now used as a fish farm apparently. Looking back at the breakwater, now we're back on the coastal path away from the road and uh, this is St Catherine's Bay. Delightful on a day like this. Another shot across the bay. Delightful smell. Apparently, uh, I heard on the news last night, local news, it can be quite toxic. They've got a problem with seaweed on Jersey. A little rock pool down there.
Okay, here we are, St. Catherine's Tower. One of General's, General Conway's original designs, but not built of granite, instead being built of rhyolite. Get a better shot of it from the other side, I think. Especially with the sun in, against me. There you go. Information board about St Catherine's White Tower. This section of the coast path could be interesting during uh, high tides and storms. You're almost walking on the um, rocks here. Just approaching uh, that tower over there. Okay, now a Achirondel Tower, another one of Conway's, built in 1794. Now used as a holiday home by Jersey Heritage again. Certainly getting their monies without their heritage, aren't they? Good idea, really. Views across the uh, beach here. Cafe over there for those that are inclined. Views back across the bay to uh, St Catherine's Breakwater over there. And the journey just undertaken. It's now coming up one o'clock. So time to be thinking in terms of lunch. And there's a nice little seat over there that looks rather tempting. This could be a good position because the sun's behind me here. And today's bench dedicated by uh, Jerry Le Gate. And I've just noticed behind it, for the first time on Jersey thus far, outside of St Helier anyway, someone has lazily dumped a bottle of rubbish, a bag of rubbish, and I bet you, judging by that bottle there, vodka, it was our Eastern European friends. Okay, around 1.30. Lunch has been had, and those wind farms over in France just come into view as the uh, sun's burnt down the mist. Horrible eyesore either ways. About six and a half mile done to this point, St Catherine's Bay, about eight more to do. Plenty of time today because I haven't got to catch a bus. Just walking back into St Helier and uh, with delightful weather like this today don't really need it to end do you? Could walk all day like this. A shot of uh, Archirondel and the beach again from a point near La Crete And a final view from what I've now discovered is a picnic area behind me. Final view of uh, St Catherine's Bay. Before we turn the headland of La Crete. Great day for swimming, as many people have decided today. down on Amport. About to follow the zigzag path across Le Dom Pilkington.
the half timbered house opposite has uh, just been sold looks like it needs a lick of paint as well a bit tired so here we are Victoria Tower the last of the Martellos to be built in Jersey in 1837 Victoria Reign maybe that's why it's called the Victoria Tower surrounded by a dry moat and uh, as you can see there will be open this Sunday when I'm not here too bad anyway there's the uh, view you get from up here fantastic as I continue to say the French coastline is very very clear now St Catherine's breakwater although there's more of a sort of cliff type turn into my left I think this is the onward route because the text refers to houses and radio masts so let's press on up here this is Mont St Nicholas by the way well as I expected didn't take much to work out it was named after Queen Victoria just been talking to a couple of lads that work for the uh, Jersey National Trust and there is a reciprocal arrangement with uh, members of the English National Trust but most of the uh, Jersey National Trust properties are free to get into anyway there's only uh, two or three that you have to pay for and you get a discount if you're a member of the English National Trust tower from another angle with its uh, excellent viewpoint of the marauding French invasion is a part across Gory Bay see the uh, edge of the castle over there much better view of it from this angle Mont Orgay castle or Gory whichever you prefer Don't bother looking at the dolmen today. Seen one already. This little fella just had a little lucky escape. Car nearly ran over him. It's the uh, caterpillar for the peacock, I think. Certainly moving. even better views now get a proper view of this uh, bay as well which I should be walking all the way along information board here about Mont or Guy Maintained by Jersey Heritage, 
plenty of information on the uh, internet, I'm sure, for those that are interested. Pretty impressive building close up. Information here about the uh, outer first gate and associated features. Information here about the charges to get in. Nearly 11 quid for an adult, so not cheap. Accounts the time team have been here. Views across Gory Bay from the castle. A view from the northern side. Unfortunately you can't get to see too much without paying. Which uh, I don't plan on doing today. You can get to see the remnants of a much older fortification closer to the sea <coughs> with a dolphin viewing platform which we'll have a look at in a second but uh, as I say here I am stood on the seaward side of the castle By all accounts you should be able to see either bottlenose dolphin, pilot whales or common dolphin. Further views across Gory Bay. Interestingly immediately opposite Gory Castle. My first sighting of solar panels. Incredible. Just thought there would have been more uh, abundant over here. People with money, etc, etc. Obviously reflects their lack of concern for the environment, I guess. Views across the harbour. With the uh, shops, hotels, etc, etc behind me and the omnipresent dominance of the castle above. Information board here about Gory Harbour, which once upon a time was a massive oyster fishing area, so much so that they had a call in the English oyster fishermen to help them. Then it got overfished and it's pretty much dead now. Walking along Gory Prom with its colourful flowers. Memorial to the former shipyards of Gory. That keel over there. Nice uh, way to remember the Jubilee. Channel Islands being a uh, royal peculiar. Further view back at the castle. And the harbour. It's the only customs port outside St Helier apparently. Following the footpath to the back of this uh, 
beach at Gory, simply because it's a bit tough walking on the sand here. Perhaps if I was to get lower down it would be easier. Okay, much like Hemlock that I'm walking past here. Yellowy flower. Anyway, I'm still up on the raised path. Lovely cooling breeze coming from the uh, sea now as we head towards Fort Henry. Now walking through a tunnel of hemlock, if that's what it is. Henry's Fort in the background. Interesting, the golf course to my right, Crown Land. I guess it's a lynx really isn't it, as soon as it's beside the sea. Finally reached Fort Henry, built in 1760 by Conway, occupied by the Germans, adjusted by the Germans, uh, and as you can see from their two bunkers very close by. Apparently the Germans uh, excavated tons and tons of this sand to assist in the building of their various fortifications around the island and they even had a little railway line running from here across the island to assist. One final view of this glorious stretch of beach all the way back to uh, Mont Orgoy, Gory, however you wish. Fantastic stretch of sand. Information board about Fort Henry, aka Fort Conway, supposedly named after Henry the Eighth, uh, Seventh, following the War of Roses in the 15th century. More on Google if you want it. Another view of the uh, fort from another angle. The uh, extra balcony type features on the top there were added by the Germans to support searchlights apparently. As we now leave the golf course behind and start walking a, along a concrete promenade, information here about Grooville 1 to 5 Towers. So the path starts getting more uh, urbanised, including um, concrete stretches. Obviously a lot flatter than the hills we've left behind. Another tower out there in, this, in the sea. Sure we'll get closer to that later. rather dilapidated tower there, awaiting restoration no doubt. Tower here being converted. On the sea wall here, which obviously you wouldn't be able to do if a tide was in I doubt, that tower over there in the distance is Seymour Tower, I've since learnt. The Fovic Embarkation Point where supposedly 50 young men escaped during the end of uh, German occupation and succeeded in reaching the French coast. However, Paddy Dillon says it happened uh, a bit further north of here. And there's another tower over there, number three, that's been converted. Lucky we're the tides today because, as I say, if it hadn't been out, it would have been a lot of boring road walking. There's been quite a lot of that today as it is, without any more. And it makes for an interesting conversion. Walking on this sand is absolutely delightful on the legs. Gives a respite after uh, some of the hard granite and roads we've had to um, 
contend with today. As I say, very lucky with the tide. Here about the Seymour Tower, which is about two miles offshore. Now I need to make a decision whether to continue inland via roads or around the coast on slippy rocks. Most of the uh, Grooville Towers, number one, and uh, in front of it, this strange rocky landscape. carry on to St Helia across this moonscape it's quite amazing really here I am at La Roque apparently the uh, French troops landed here 1781 they did well getting across all that uh, granite. Information board here about wintering seabirds at La Rock. Winter seems a long way off on a day like today. At Rock Tower. There you go. Slowly but surely the uh, moonscape is now turning into lovely sandy beach which makes for very pleasant walking underfoot as I approach another tower over there. Information panel here about Icho Tower one of the uh, three Martellos built on the orders of General Don Self-explanatory. There is the Hock Tower. Approaching Le Nez Point, the neck point or Green Island on the map. Just see the white tower out there of, uh, oh, sorry, the white top of Seymour Tower out there. an amazing landscape I don't think I've ever seen anything like it on a beach brilliant okay St Helia there in the distance so not so far to go now back where it all started eh four days ago though I must remember to get Liberation Square in today Getting low on minutes as well, about six and a half, seven minutes left. Seen some towers around the island, but it, uh, this is the first, or one of the few lighthouses I've seen. Information about uh, Fort Daveren at Havre Park. which is now uh, a Lido views over a fairly commercial St Helier's from a point near Fort Regent bit of a drab ending to a pretty good walk actually but there you go a little bit of urban okay here we are quarter to six 
all 48 miles of the coast path completed and what a delight it was save for the uh, beginning section in St Helia and the last section in St Helia didn't like those too much but here we are back in uh, Liberation Square excellent uh, guide written by Paddy Dillon well done Paddy and um, along with my free map from the tourist office one twenty-five thousand scale managed to get round the island in no problem glorious weather helped today we've had uh, three days glorious weather really one day when it was grey but that was a day when we was walking through German occupied territory pretty much anyway so they deserve to be grey so here we go self-explanatory number of memorials around the square commemorating the event and another so that's it thus concludes the 48 mile circular of the Jersey coastline Highly recommended. I forgot to add that today's section was 15.4 miles per my pedometer as I look towards uh, Jersey's power station tunnel there. Anyway, that is definitely the end now, finished. <laughs>